Um, so yeah, f uh, for part of this week's homework, uh, I'm gonna have you guys create uh, an animation similar to uh, this Gapminder style uh, animation uh, of, of things over time. So, you know, this is just a, a simple scatter plot showing um, basically income versus life expectancy. And, and we can see, you know, kind of the, uh, the progress that, uh, that the world has been making. Um, and in particular, you can see China and India, these two big circles, kind of catching up with uh, the U.S. and, and whatnot. Um, and so to, uh, to complete such an animation, what you will need to do is uh, you'll need to uh, install a package animation, okay? And then you load the, uh, the library animation. Uh, you should always make sure you have the, uh, the latest version of R running. Uh, sometimes uh, students run into problems and, uh, and a lot of that can be fixed by just updating um, your version of R. And then uh, in order to export these animation files into, uh, into GIFs or uh, whatever else uh, you might be uh, interested in making, what you'll need to do is uh, you might, you probably need to install something called Image Magic with a CK, okay? All of this is detailed in the documentation. So if you look up our package animation, if it, uh, if it loads up, um, the documentation, um, this, this will explain to you the packages that you need. So uh, either image magic or graphics magic. Um, you can even uh, create animations in a PDF file. Uh, but that's going to require that you have LaTeX uh, installed. Do you guys have LaTeX on your guys' machines? Okay, so some of you guys have LaTeX already there. Uh, and so if you do, then, um, then you're in luck. You can uh, export as PDF. Uh, the animation package will export into HTML. Uh, and so, you know, if you have a website or something, you can, you can load these things. But... Um, but you know, as far as file submissions for grading, uh, it would require that you upload a, an you know a directory of JavaScript dependencies, uh, and so to avoid that, uh, I'm going to ask that you guys export them as PDF. I mean, uh, yeah, either PDFs or GIFs. Okay, probably GIF would be preferred, just because it's uh, probably going to be uh, uh, easier, and so. Um, Maybe the, uh, the command you would use would be save GIF or GIF, however we're supposed to pronounce it. Um, and so, um, so we have this. And um, okay, and so, uh, you know, the, the primary thing that you're going to be feeding the command uh, save gif or save gif is a loop, okay? And so, okay, and so this, uh, this first thing that we're gonna give it is a, is a loop and, uh, and each iteration of the loop, so you know, it might be for i and one through 10, each iteration of the loop should produce a plot, okay? And so, you know, we could just make up a, a fake data set, okay? So we can just do um, kind of data.frame, and we'll call this, we'll make a data frame, and it will be, um, we'll have uh, x be three, uh, ten, 10 random normals, and y will be uh, 10 random normals as well, okay? All right, and then so, you know, if we were to just create a plot in ggplot2, 
we could do ggplot data as x equals x, y equals y, and we would do add plus geom underscore point, right? Okay, and so this graphs are 10 random coordinate pairs. And, uh, and this is not that fascinating, but what we can do is we can, you know, create a simple animation just graphing one, one row at a time, right? So we could do, um, basically, I can take our data uh, and I can filter it. So I can say filter dat, and uh, what we want is we want is it row equals one? Okay, and if I do that, um, how do I uh, select a row in uh, with filter? <laughs> oh, of course. using my other um, <laughs> well I think I'll uh, I will just put um, create index <laughs> one through ten here. Okay. Uh, in our in our data frame. Okay, and that that'll just solve our problems. Okay, and so what we can do is, uh, you know, using our filtered data. So you know, if I looked at data, viewed the data set data itself. Uh, I've got index, 1 through 10, x is this, y is that. And so each thing of our, um, our ggplot, we, uh, we can filter our data and then um, feed it into ggplot and ask it to, uh, to plot the thing, OK? And, uh, and we notice that uh, it's just plotting the dot in the center of our graph, which is probably not what we want. So uh, we probably should uh, create some fixed, fixed axes here. So prior to filtering our data, um, we see kind of the range goes from anywhere from something going on. Uh, it goes from negative 1 to maybe three on the uh, x-axis, and it looks maybe about negative two to positive two on the y-axis. So we can, um, we can specify these, and you know I, I can never remember any of these things off the top of my head, so I just go to the ggplot2 documentation and just look at the uh, scale for the x, OK? <coughs> or x axis limits. I think it's just, OK, so I got limbs, x limb, and y limb. So, so you can just say x limb goes from negative 2 to, you know, we'll say negative 2 to 2, and y limb will be from negative 2 to 2, OK? And so we can just kind of plot and make sure that this uh, makes sense. Two rows contain missing values. I'm not sure what, why that's the case. OK, well. Uh, we'll continue on here. And so um, with each iteration of our loop that we're feeding inside the save, save GIF function, 
is uh, we are going to filter the data. Okay, and we're going to set uh, set the filtered equal to i. Okay, and then um, and then we're just going to plot the data point. All right. So every time it runs, you just you know you filter, <coughs> and then it's going to plot the thing. So we can kind of you know just kind of test it out and just say i equals one. See what, what plots, and that that's what shows up right there. We can say i equals two, and we see uh, plot moves over there. I equals three. Okay, and then so we see the little dot moving around. Yeah, question? Uh, yeah, that uh, did you load uh, library dplyr? Okay. Um, so uh, and what? What does your data frame look like? So, so in my data frame, I've created three columns. I've, I've created index, which is 1 through 10, x, which is 10 random normal values, and y, which is 10 random normal values. Yeah, I have the same thing. It's just the error message says uh, object i. Oh, you've got to define your i. Oh, okay. To, so this is just to kind of say, like, i is, you know, row 1, row 2, row 3. OK? All right, so each iteration is going to produce a, a plot. All right, and so this was the, um, the mistake that I was making. OK. Um, the mistake was you have to save your ggplot object. OK. And so I'm actually going to modify my loop so the filtering is in one step. OK. So I'm going to just call something d. And then. And, uh, and ggplot will reference our data D, OK, that, that has been filtered. Okay? And then the result of the ggplot, I'm going to save it as a graph G. I'm just picking arbitrary uh, letters here. And then the last step that will uh, make everything work will be print um, your resulting ggplot object. Okay. So this should still work. If I set i equal to 3, d should filter the, uh, the data. And then g will create a graph, an object, and it hasn't plotted it yet. And then running the command print g will produce the graph. Okay. And then so I'm going to put this inside of my loop. All right, and so that's the uh, the first object. So you've got save GIF, and then the first thing is you know inside the curly braces, you have an entire loop, and each iteration of the loop produces a graph. Okay, and then you can um, specify all of the other um, uh, all of the other options that go with. Uh, Which, uh, which is movie name is equal to something and all of this stuff. Um, so I think, I think the de defaults are fine, actually, if you don't want to specify anything. Uh, you probably do want to set your working directory. So, um, so I'm going to set that to just, uh, we'll set it right here. And then we'll try running this command here, and we'll see if it if it produces anything without any errors. It says uh, it says it worked. Um, it it's still giving me the error that uh, that it was missing some values, and I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Maybe uh, maybe my x maybe my limits are are no good. Oh, I see. Yeah, there were two rows that are outside of our range when I set um, the x limits to be 2 and negative 2. So if I extend my x limits to like 3, then it, everything will work fine. OK, so I can just run this again, using, uh, just changing my uh, x limits. OK, and so of course, your thing, you might run into errors depending on um, where everything went. It says uh, it spit it out under animation.gif or gif. And, uh, and that's because I have uh, ImageMagic installed. 
If you don't have uh, Image Magic installed, then it might um, cause you. Uh, and so this is this is a very exciting um, <laughs> graphic of uh, it just iterating, going through the um, the thing. Okay. Um, I, I guess other um, other things to watch out for. So depending on you know if you have a Windows machine, you might have to. Um, Make sure that Image Magic runs with administrator rights. There, there's all sorts of just little um, nitpicky things that can uh, cause cause your thing to uh, to go bad. So, um, or you might have to run our studio with admin rights. There's it's uh, uh, dumb little things. So if uh, you know right now maybe you don't have I Image Magic installed on your machine and so it's giving you errors, you can uh, try the Save HTML version okay and I think even with the default settings it should um, work just fine okay and so here using the HTML um, it'll open up a browser and and create the uh, the graph that that we have done okay is this okay all right and so um, your assignment this week is to you know basically expand this concept of creating an animation. Uh, and so I will have you go to uh, Gapminder, down, download their, um, their data, and, uh, and create uh, an animation. And so uh, Hans Rosling just produced a, uh, well, not just produced, maybe last, last year in, uh, in June or something. Um, he produced a, a graphic or a, a little video comparing the uh, fertility rates of Mexico versus the United States and uh, over time and how, uh, how things have, things were quite different, you know, 40 years ago, but today they're quite similar um, as far as, you know, fertility rates and uh, e economy goes, or I'm not economy, uh, lifespan goes. Uh, so you can... Uh, so I present it as a challenge to kind of create, one, um, recreate the, the graphic that he has, um, you know, including all of the other uh, aspects that uh, ggplot is capable of. So probably your biggest um, asset in for, for all of this will be the uh, ggplot2 documentation, which is going to be, you know, your first or second um, hit when you uh, just search for ggplot2. So um, the second hit on Google is the documentation. And, uh, and all of these things, um, you know, you're going to start off probably looking at the documentation for points geometry, so geom point. And then the other uh, aspects that you, you're going to probably mess around with will be, you know, things like scales and um, um, adding uh, annotations and things like that, okay? Um, all right. Are there any uh, questions? Yeah. Image magic, it, so it's not a package. It's, a, it's like a separate... Uh, entirely separate thing, okay? So it's it's just another, is, are you running Windows or PC, oh, Mac? Fine. You're on a Mac. Okay, so what you're gonna do, so when you look at the um, documentation for uh, save GIF and the animation package, okay, it's gonna talk about, you're gonna see this thing for image magic, all right, and, uh, and you're gonna, you can probably just click the link inside the, uh, the documentation there, all right? All right, and um, you can probably go to just download and download the appropriate uh, binary and, uh, and install it. And you, um, the animation package is pretty smart in that it, it'll know the correct paths to search and, uh, and make use of the, uh, the Image Magic um, program. Um, you might have to restart uh, the R session, uh, but, uh, but it should work. Um, 
And, uh, you know, when I first ran in on my machine, I had some problems, and it was because I didn't have admin rights enabled for, for the thing. And so, um, you know, that's a, that's a fix. But, it, you know, these little things can be uh, frustrating in trying to figure, figure out, okay? All right, so uh, I, I, think, uh, I think that's a, a neat little uh, thing, and it, it's you know, kind of flashy and pretty, and so you can kind of, you know, if, if you're uh, on the, you know, searching for a job and you want to be able to show off your data analysis chops, you can show that you can generate these pretty graphics and, and, uh, and animations, and that's always it's kind of neat, I think. All right. Um, as far as other um, other graph graphics that we can create in ggplot2, okay? So there's there's a there's a whole bunch. Um, not all of them are well suited for multivariate data, which is kind of the um, the point of uh, this exploration. But um, but I I do want to point a, a few of them out, and um, so. One thing that ggplot will not do is 3D contour um, graphs. Okay, and so 3D contours, those are um, those are very f uh, pretty and flashy, but in terms of um, in terms of their usefulness, um, you know, other than you know maybe trying to show off some kind of topology or something. You probably don't really need to draw a 3D mesh, okay? I mean, it looks nice, and if you want to show off, like, this is, you know, we gathered data on Mars, and this is what the uh, the surface of the planet looks like, sure, you can do that. But probably um, a much better thing would be a, a two-dimensional contour where you can actually... Um, Uh, see the actual values showing up in the um, in the in, in the graph itself. Okay, um, and ggplot does support contour graphs. It doesn't support these uh, 3D um, 3D things. But you can do it. It's uh, you know just look up wireframe um, R. Okay, and uh, and there'll there'll be all sorts of packages that that do stuff, but chances are you know in, in your day to day life you probably won't won't need to use them, and in fact these uh, you know contour lines and density plots probably not may may not necessarily uh, be needed either. Okay, and so if you have um, so we can look at you know revisit um, the diamonds data, okay? So, you know, pulling up diamond, the diamonds data set, so I'm gonna just load up data diamonds. And um, so we'll, we'll just look at the, uh, the most simple, which is the, um, well, the, the X and Y coordinates, right? So if we look at, um, you know, head of diamonds and we look at what, what variables are recorded, you know, we see the things such as carrot, cut, color, clarity, depth, table, price, X and Y, okay? And so X and Y, this is, you know, how wide the diamond is cut and how, uh, you know, how deep the diamond, or I don't know, the, looking at the top of the diamond, you're looking at the x and y dimensions of this, okay? And, and ideally, they're exactly the same because it's supposed to be like a perfect circle, right? And so, you know, we can plot x and y. And so if I just did a ggplot um, diamonds, we can create an aesthetic mapping of x equal to x and y equal to y. Okay. 
And then I can just uh, do a standard scatter plot. And, uh, and it looks like this, OK? So you know, perhaps I should uh, get rid of these outliers uh, and limit ourselves just to uh, basically from 3 to, we'll say, 12 here, or 3 to 10, really. OK, so I'll, I'll just uh, we'll filter our diamonds as such. And actually, um, I'm going to kind of randomly sample from our diamonds. So we'll just we'll deal with um, a smaller um, set of diamonds. So I'm going to do um, samp underscore n, sample underscore n. And we'll just pick a thousand of these, all right? And then so ggplot will deal with our sample, okay? And so this is what our our scatter plot looks like, okay? So it looks like a very uh, very straight line, and we can create a kind of a, a density contour of this. So notice um, I can just take the exact same. I can just create this thing, ggplot, which is uh, the, the base, which is an aesthetic mapping of x to x and y to y. And we can just call this p, all right? And then we can create a whole bunch of different graphs just by changing the, um, the geometry that's being graphed. So um, if I create p, you know, p plus g on point will create that. If I um, ask for p again, and I ask for um, add the uh, two-dimensional density plot. <laughs> Excuse me. This creates uh, an, an entirely different um, thing. But the underlying, so this is, uh, this is kind of the, the difference between ggplot and all of your other plot functions is that ggplot relies on the what they call the grammar of graphics, which starts off with an aesthetic mapping. And then on top of that aesthetic mapping, then you can put different layers. Okay, And so that layer could be your uh, two-dimensional density, which creates a, this contour graph Okay, versus this. Um, you can create. Um, Um, if you uh, add this stat um, um, you know you're just you're just changing a, another aesthetic mapping which is going to be um, the the fill okay so all we're doing is we've just changed just added uh, an extra option here, um, and it uh, and it changes the uh, the look of our graph. It's it's pretty much exactly the same as this, except we've just created. We said, hey, when uh, you know, color these things in and color them different colors, and that's uh, that's controlled with uh, another aesthetic mapping of fill to this. Um, with uh, with the Diamond data set, you could create, add another aesthetic mapping. So if we wanted to add the, um, the aesthetic mapping of the cut, the quality of the cut to the thing, you can do that. And it, um, it's created, uh, it's, it's very difficult to see in this, but it's created a, a whole bunch of different, uh, the similar contour types, okay? But they have different colorings based on whether the cut is fair, good, very good, premium, or ideal, okay? So, you know, all of this stuff. And you'll notice that the, the command is just, we have the base mapping between um, x and y taken from our data with ggplot. 
And all we're doing is we're just changing the, um, the geometry that's being plotted on top of it. Okay. And you can try other geometries and just kind of see what would happen. And it might not give you the, uh, the results that you want. So if I just said, uh, you know, plot geometry line, you know, then it tries to connect everything with x and y's uh, as a line. And this is probably not the, uh, the graph that we're looking for. But, um, but it's quite neat that you can, um, you can just try different um, geometries laid, laid on top of the, uh, of the underlying um, aesthetic mappings. Okay? And so, you know, as you, as you guys are trying to create different, um, different graphics within ggplot, um, I think um, probably the, uh, the way I would go about is I would try to think, you know, how would I want this graphic uh, displayed? Or how do I want to communicate this information? And just kind of have a, a general picture of you know, am I going to do a scatter plot? Then I'm going to use geom point, and then try to figure out what what else I'm going to do. If uh, if you want to do something else with uh, with lines or whatever it might be, okay, then um, then you can look at the uh, the list of geomes or geometries that uh, that ggplot can produce, and and you know whatever it might be, look at then the uh, the aesthetic mappings that it supports. Okay, and most of them, most of these support similar aesthetic mappings. Usually, you know, an X and a Y, and you know, all of these different things, colors and fills. And so you, depending on uh, what you're doing, a lot of these just support the same underlying base aesthetic mapping. And then just a, a switch up of the uh, geometry that's being uh, overlaid, the data. Okay. And then if you want to further modify things like the scale and the legend and all of that stuff, those are entirely separate. Okay. And those show up down here, you know, with scales and things like that. And so, you know, once you have your base graph aesthetic mapping plus the, uh, you know, the, the primary layer of information that's being produced, then you can tweak it with just by um, tweaking the, um, the scales or the other, other attributes. And a lot of them have simple, uh, simple commands. So for example, if you wanted to change the, uh, the scale on the, uh, the x-axis, okay, you can um, uh, you know, look at the... Uh, the axes and all of these options and, and the uh, the documentation on the website I believe is excellent um, there's almost almost everything you can find is there and and the worst case scenario you're trying to say like you know how do I create a, a log scale okay you just type in ggplot2 log scale um, and of course not uh, there but uh, you know usually the top hit will be from the ggplot2 um, documentation itself. Uh, if not, you can always look at um, Stack Overflow results, okay? Um, and of course, whatever it might be, you've got all of these options. So here, you know, you just say, oh, this is the log scale that I want for uh, X or wh whatever, okay? <clears throat> so you just throw those in there and it will, um, it will change so much of your graph, okay? Or, or just the, uh, the way it's plotted, but in terms of the underlying mapping, you just need to map the underlying base aesthetics and then um, everything else, it's quite simple. And so I think that, you know, this grammar of graphics thing with ggplot uh, makes things a lot, a lot more simple and easy to manipulate. Um, I was debating whether or not to cover creating maps, and I don't know how often you will encounter map data. Uh, and whatnot, but you know these are kind of the the flashy graphics that you can uh, produce. And there's a there's a very um, elegant package, and it's called ggmap. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess I'll I'll introduce it here. Um, and if you guys are interested into it in in it, then you can uh, seek out um, 
you know the examples and and whatnot. Okay, but you can load library ggmap. And you can, um, its base thing is uh, one of its primary um, commands is this function get map, okay? And it defaults to uh, going to Google, and you just say something like uh, UCLA, Los Angeles, California, okay? And it's basically going to enter this search query into um, Google Maps. And if it can find find it, it will uh, it will pull back the map. Okay, so um, say so ask you know get the map. It looks like it pulled something, and then um, and then to uh, to plot it, you just use the function ggmap, and then you you plot the map that it was asking for. And let's see. Okay, and uh, okay, and so it's uh, it's centered right here at. Uh, at UCLA, so we probably want to modify the zoom level. So we can say zoom equal uh, 15, okay? And it just calls to, you know, you can see it calling to Google because it's got this uh, map API, and then you, uh, you ask for it, and uh, boom, we're right there, okay? Uh, maybe you don't want this contour, this terrain thing, so you can just say um, map type is equal to uh, road map. And, uh, and you'll get the, uh, the road map version, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a very um, awesome package, okay? And it, and it just pulls this off, all right? And then if you want to um, plot things on top of this, okay, it has its coordinate system is, uh, is already set up. And so um, you can then do, um, oh shoot, how do I, uh, I, I gotta check the documentation because I forgot. <laughs> um, but you know, let's say, um, let's say from somewhere else, some other data source, and I was trying to figure out um, if, if we have a good data source for this kind of stuff. Let's say you had some coordinate D data, okay, and you say, you know, some, some we have a dot here at, you know, 118, 445, and 34075, or something like that, okay, so we have, um, you know, x, or, you know, a dot is going to be, um, uh, um, we'll say longitude, Lon is uh, you know minus 118.445, and then latitude will be um, 34.075. Okay, and uh, and the the map op this map that it's created <coughs> uh, looks like this. Let me uh, let me just double check the documentation on GG Map. I can get this to work uh, as it is, but um, but the uh, the ggmap is uh, you know you can pull pull things off uh, rather rather quickly. The uh, I think the hardest part in dealing with any kind of map data is being able to get things reported as longitude and latitude coordinates. Okay, and so um, <clears throat> you might have um, you know you can go to like LAPD crime data, okay? But they report their crime data as addresses, okay? Which is, uh, which is useful, but you need to convert your addresses into uh, longitude and latitude coordinate data. 
which, uh, which can be tedious. There are websites you just do, um, you know, look up uh, coordinates from address, okay? And you've got different, uh, different tools where you can kind of feed it to all of this stuff and it's gonna spit out the, uh, the results. But, um, but it can be a, a bit um, tiresome to try to do that. Um, I think uh, ggmap may be able to do some uh, base things. I've only played around with ggmap kind of at a cursory level. I haven't really tried to produce any kind of uh, amazing graphics with it. Um, yet, but um, you know, if you had some kind of project and you wanted to plot things on a map, um, ggmap is probably the way to go. It's uh, it works nicely with ggplot, uh, and so uh, a lot of the things work together. Uh, and ggplot also supports its own map functions that um, where it's not going to be pulling things from Google, but it will. Uh, um, plot things. Um, why not? Let me just see if I can just do points. Um, this probably won't work, but we can try. No. Okay. Um, plot. Yeah. Okay. Not quite. Um, but okay. Um, so I'll I'll get uh, a, a assignment posted uh, up, and uh, and you can work on it this weekend. Um, so one of them will be an animation, and then I'm trying to figure out what to do. Um, with the, the second part of the assignment. But I think, uh, I think we can have some fun doing some uh, neat visualizations uh, within R. And then, uh, and then next week, I'll probably start um, doing a little bit more uh, math-related stuff. Um, but, um, but I don't know. I thought in the beginning it could be fun just to uh, do some fun things in R with uh, visualizations. OK, have a, have a great weekend. We'll see you guys on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, well, you do have a section on Tuesday, so I guess uh, we'll see you guys on Tuesday, too.